Hi there, this is Holly at The Morning Pour. Thank you so much for joining not only me here today at my channel, but thank you for joining all of us artists who have come together today to do an amazing collaboration for you. This is really fun. I really like this one a lot because well for many reasons but first of all we're using a very limited number of colors i'll go over the colors in a moment but you've seen them on the beginning on the screen and the thing i find so interesting about this is that i have had even my own experiences where i have mixed up somewhat large cups of individual colors and then i have been able to pour many different smaller size paintings from the same mixes. So the colors are exactly the same. I didn't even have to remix them, imagining they might be the same. They literally were made from the same cups. And I still got so many different looks within those paintings, including which colors at times were the most prominent. So I am so excited and anxious to see how all of the different artist paintings are going to look today. In addition to the fact that I myself have gotten so many different looks by using the same exact mixes, we are just restricted in terms of what colors we actually use within this collaboration. For example, my orange is a modern master's italic, it's burnt orange, and this is a semi-opaque color. This would behave very differently than if it were a completely opaque color or of a different brand or if it were just a regular color versus a metallic color. Um, so there are some variables within it and it's going to be very exciting to see what each of us come out with. In addition to the four colors that we are standardly using, we are also able to add in our choice of black or white. So I have chosen to add white and I also am very curious as to what the others are going to add and what their outcomes are going to look like. So again, all of the information is in the description below this video in terms of the different artists and links to their channels so that you can go and see what they have done as well. So again, thank you for being here. Uh, obviously the pour is already out my cup. Look at that shape. I was immediately intrigued with what I was seeing there on the canvas. Give me a thumbs up or even a comment below if you've got anything you'd like to share at this point. What do you think about the way this looks? All right, and also if you like my content, if you like what you have been seeing here and believe that I might have more that interests you, consider subscribing and clicking the bell. Okay, so my paints are all mixed with Floetrol and a small dash of Golden's Gloss Pouring Medium just for added stability in the final result. The pouring medium, as far as I know, does not add to any of the reactions that you actually see within the paint. It just adds to the stability because flow, flow troll in and of itself will continue to expand a little bit as time gradually goes before it sets enough. So the pouring medium helps to stop that and it also helps to keep the binding properties within the paint because Floetrol does not have binders. If we add any water, it does not have binders. So we want our paintings, if we like our paintings, we want them to be able to hold up for years and years, especially if we are selling our art. Now, I did not start adding pouring mediums to my art until very recently. It, it is an additional cost factor. And I really would not add it in until you are somewhat consistently pleased with the results of your paintings. So here you see how slowly I am tilting. I will start to speed this footage up right about here, but I wanted you to see a little bit of the actual speed before I actually sped up the footage. So at this point there are shapes within the painting that are holding up that I do like, but I don't really love how faded and pale the orange has become. 
So I, at this point, am questioning the Modern Masters Orange. Not sure if that was the best choice or not sure if there was another factor at play in this, but I had really anticipated that orange coming through a bit more and giving that vibrant punch that I really was anticipating having in the outcome of this painting. I do like the cells. Uh, as we're looking at this on the screen, it looks like it's in that upper right-hand corner. As I was painting it, it was more toward me, so it was the lower corner toward me. And in the bottom of the screen, as we're viewing, I like a lot of what the aqua is doing there. However, a lot of the other colorings are not really holding up well. So at this point, I'm not entirely too sure if this painting is going to be something that I'm going to overall be happy with, even though there are elements to it that are quite pleasing, like those swooping shapes of what looks like a tannish color now, which was where I had some oranges and probably some coppers, but they've gotten so faded out. And then there's that aqua that sort of outlines those shapes. It's a beautiful sweeping shape. I absolutely love that. And I love all those cells on the outer edge. Well, now it's above it, depending on which way I angle the canvas, whether it's above or below. But within it, there are, it's, I'm just not really happy with the fading out of the colors. Now, this could be someone else's cup of tea. It really might be something that someone would really enjoy hanging on their wall with this coloring the way that it is. It's not what I wanted, though, so I'm actually pouring another cup. There you see I have filled up another cup. It's not filled all the way because I'm kind of planning to keep that section, which is right now looking to us like the upper right-hand corner. I really like the cell formations there. And so at this point, it's my plan to keep that. But of course, when we repour, we don't really know what the color scheme is going to end up looking like, and we don't really know if what is left on the canvas is really going to go with it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it does not. So at this point, my aim is to keep part of what's on the canvas, but I'm willing to also just go with what happens and play it as it unfolds. I was able to achieve more consistent good results with my paintings once I understood and once I was able <laughs> to stay calm inside because at first for a while when I was doing acrylic pour paintings I would get a little uptight and a little bit nervous as all this paint was flowing around on the canvas. It, it sort of was startling at first what that actually felt like. and. So I wasn't really staying calm and in my centered a lot of the time and I wasn't really able to think and assess and so anyway once I was able to kind of just pull myself back into myself, take a moment, breathe. Um, I, I still don't always have my thoughts about me the way that I would like. Sometimes when I see the footage back I will think oh gosh I wish I would have only done that or this. So. Again, let me know in the comments below if that happens to you still. So again, I'm pouring very slowly. I'm trying to maintain the parts of the painting that are already stretched out that I really think I like and that I believe I would like to have stay on the canvas if it's possible. And I also just want to carefully tilt so that I can maintain as well as possible the configuration within the new part of the pour as well. So there's a lot of things I think are very interesting happening on the canvas, but it, there's also a little bit of a two-tone type of situation going on. So at this point, I'm looking at it thinking, wow, there's elements within both sections I really like that really work for me. And yet it's not exactly a cohesive painting at this point. So not sure what is going to happen here. So I'm just sharing with you a little bit of my thought process and how this was unfolding on this. So there's a lot of really gorgeous larger cells opening up in that purple range over to the left. 
at the time I was pouring it, it was upper right, but as we were seeing it, before I just tilted the canvas, it was lower left. Now it's about to be upper right. So there's a lot happening up in there. A lot of really interesting shapes, cells opening up. So at this point, as you can see, I'm stretching this new part over a larger portion of the canvas. I'm very slowly choosing what I'm doing. I, I really didn't know, of course, once I poured that secondary puddle exactly what I was going to do. I'm literally going slowly, taking moments to assess and consider what's happening at each step along the way, and then making a choice from there. Where else do I want to tilt? And so as you can see, I've ended up actually tilting this across most of the canvas, but it's because I was continuously appreciating what I was seeing happening from this secondary pour. Okay, just taking a moment to assess, taking a breather, just looking at the different parts, looking at the different flows, seeing if my eye gets stuck anywhere. If your eye gets stuck anywhere, then chances are that's not a focal point. Chances are that's a distraction point and that it's interrupting what would otherwise might be a very nice flow within a well done composition. So just consider that if your eye keeps going to one thing or one or two things and taking away from your attention in a flow, like a cohesive type of flow, then chances are whatever is snagging your eye might actually be sort of like an eyesore rather than what would perhaps be considered a positive focal point. Again, you have to take some time to consider that because though that may be the fact in most cases, it may not be the fact in all cases. So always assess each painting just take a little time, a few deep breaths here and there, and assess what is going on. So I'm just looking at the corners and just feeling like they, this one over here where I have the cup, I feel like it's just standing out a little too much in a way that doesn't really work. So I'm just bringing in a little bit more of the additional colors with what is left over in the cup. Sometimes I do like to scoop up with a spoon from the drippings on the table and then add those to the painting very carefully. Other times I like to take the leftovers from the cup. It depends on what type of, of effect I'm looking for. Typically I find that the drippings off the table or the counter, whatever you're pouring on, when you go back in with those, they do maintain some individuality, but the strips of color usually are a little bit thin. They're very tiny usually and not as prominent. Whereas if there are leftovers from the cup, you will tend to get more prominent strips of color. So it depends on what the touch-up is that is needed in terms of which I will normally choose to draw from. I'm amazed with many of the effects that have come forth through this painting. There's, I don't even know what you'd call some of that. It looks like little pebbling or little, almost like little rocks little grains of rocks or something and I find that very interesting I'm not sure what went into that but I really like it and I'm just scraping the edges I sometimes we'll scrape for up to 45 minutes periodically until the paint solidifies enough to be safe enough to stop so up ahead is the displayed results and the close-ups so definitely stay here for that